This video is going to be about rationalizing the denominator of a fraction. Let's say we have the fraction 2 over the square root of 3. Now sometimes in algebra it's useful to not have a square root or a radical in the denominator of a fraction. Getting rid of the square root is going to be fairly easy if we realize that there's a simple trick we can use. Let's say we take the square root of any number. I'm going to use 7 as an example. If we multiply a square root by itself, in other words, if we square a square root, let's see what happens. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, using the product rule, is going to be the square root of 7 times 7. That will mean we have the square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. In other words, no matter what number we start out with under the radical sign, if we multiply that radical by itself, we're going to end up with the number without the radical. So let's go back to the original problem. If I want to get rid of the square root of 3, I'll have to multiply it by the square root of 3. But I can't multiply the denominator of a fraction without also multiplying the numerator by the same thing. So I'm going to have to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. This makes sense because any number over itself is going to equal 1, and of course we can multiply a number by 1 and not really change it. So carrying out the multiplication that I have here, I have 2 times the square root of 3 and I've got the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just going to give me a 3. I can't reduce this fraction, so that's going to be my answer. Let's look at a few more. Here's one with a square root in both the numerator and the denominator. Now remember, all I want to do is get rid of the square root in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by the fraction square root of 2 over the square root of 2. The numerator, using the product rule, will just be the square root of 5 times the square root of 2, which will equal the square root of 5 times 2, or the square root of 10. And the denominator, square root of 2 times the square root of 2, is just going to equal 2. I can't simplify this radical, square root of 10, and so my answer is going to remain like that, square root of 10 over 2. Let's look at this one. Here we have 3 plus the square root of 7 over the square root of 3. Well, I know I'm going to multiply by the fraction square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Let's fix that 3. What I have to remember here is that I'm multiplying the square root of 3 times the entire numerator. In other words, I'm going to distribute this square root of 3 to both the 3 and the square root of 7. So let's do that. 3 times the square root of 3 is going to give me 3 times the square root of 3, plus I've got the square root of 7 times the square root of 3. Well, 7 times 3 is 21, so that'll give me the square root of 21. Going to the denominator, I've just got the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is going to equal 3. Looking at everything, I can't really simplify this, and so that's going to be my answer. Here's a little challenge problem. Let's say you have 5 over the cube root, the third root, of 2. How can you rationalize the denominator? In other words, how can we get rid of that radical sign in the denominator? I'll leave this as a problem for you to worry about yourself. That's it for now. Take care. See you next time.